Hi, my name is Suzanne DeVore. I'm a PhD candidate in Second Language Studies at the University of Hawaii at Manoa, and I'm presenting today with Stephen Shui, who is a language technology specialist in the Center for Language Technology, also at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Our presentation today is about a project that we worked on together uh, that was focused on helping students progress from advanced to superior Mandarin, um, particularly focusing on their own domain-specific interests um, in an individualized construction, individualized instruction context. So just to provide some background on this project, uh, we did have students in the program from very early beginning learners all the way up to very high level fourth year learners. Um, and at the lower levels, you know, we would focus on really reinforcing foundations, reiterating what they were learning in their, in their classes and giving students opportunities to practice their language skills outside of the classroom. And a lot of the emphasis at this level was really on describing narration, giving instructions, these lower level actual functions. Uh, in the third year, we started to work with students um, on their own domain. So the students in this program typically had a major outside of the Chinese department, things like business or medicine, communications, tourism, industry management, uh, something like that. And we really, at this third year level, we started to help students to expand their areas of language comfort into their own domain. Um, and at this, you know, the third year level that meant focusing on their domain, focusing specifically on handling more abstract topics, uh, actual skills like actual functions like description. And then as students got into higher levels, uh, we would add things like argumentation, hypothesizing, summarizing, and these higher level actual functions. And then at the final stages of the program, actually the students went overseas for a full year where they participated in courses that were in their own fields related to their own domains, and also do an internship related to their own professional interests. Um, so the, the area of the particular levels that we're focusing on today are this third and fourth year level where students have basic uh, language skills and are now expanding into their own domain. And for some additional background, you know, our, our emphasis in this was very much individualized. Um, we did take a sociocultural approach to this. Uh, the idea with this really is that learners have on the one end of their knowledge spectrum, you know, they have things that they're very capable of, they're very comfortable with, they can do this easily with no help. And on the other end of the spectrum, there are things that are just beyond the student's ability, no matter how much help you give them, they just can't do that yet. And then in the middle, there is the zone of proximal development, which is things students can do, but maybe need some help, some degree of help and support in order to be able to do them well. And, you know, that can be a lot of help. It could be uh, just a little bit of help. There's a, definitely a range of help that students would need. But the goal of the program was really to give students just the right amount of help in order to help them develop these domain specific abilities. Uh, so to give you an idea of how this tutoring program worked from the student's point of view, um, each session, uh, whether the skill was focused, whether the session was focusing on reading, writing, speaking, or listening, the first step was always to review what they had done in the previous week. If it was a speaker or a writing session, they would go back and self-edit work that they had previously done. So they would reread their work, they would identify things that they would like to change about it, or they would re-listen to their audio and also identify things that they would like to change about that. Um, if it was a reading or listening session, they would go back and review the reading that they had done the previous week and then continue with that reading in the, in the current week. Um, the next step might be in some weeks, you know, the students need to select new materials. So uh, they basically selected these materials from a short list that we gave them. And then they would work with the same materials over the course of about four or five weeks. The next two steps is really engaging with the material, negotiating meaning with their tutors, help, and guidance. Um, this is really something that happened over the course of several weeks. And each week, you know, we ask students to go into more depth, understand it in more detail. Um, and then, of course, the final step would be to plan and produce written and spoken pres presentational texts that were correspondingly uh, complex regarding the level of detail that they had read up to that point. So administratively, what's happening, you know, is the blue boxes. So um, from the tutor, you know, in the first step, the tutor is really 
focusing on giving students some a limited amount of very specific and targeted feedback that they can grasp and that they can apply to future writing. At the second stage, um, you know, programmatically, we're, we developed short lists of reading materials that were both level appropriate and also relevant to the student's domain. Uh, at the third and fourth level, this was really the tutors, the tutor is really working with the student to give them guidance on, you know, reading and listening strategies and providing appropriate feedback for them in order to be able to better understand the materials that they're working with. And then finally, in the last step, the tutors, um, you know, supporting the learners planning and production in various ways. So the technology really comes in at two key stages. So first in the selection of reading materials. Um, and then the second stage was um, in the building of a portfolio that was also linked to a Google form that we used in the classroom. Um, and I, I mentioned, you know, that this took place over a five week cycle, but of course those five week cycles changed as the students' abilities increased. So, you know, an advanced low student who is just coming into the domain specific level might be focusing on things more like personal connections. Um, you know, what do you think about this? Why did you choose this? Why do you like this topic? Something like that. Um, descriptions of any pictures or visuals that are in the, in the reading summarizing you know in the third week they might start to summarize you know you've been working with this material for three weeks summarize your understanding so far and then in the fourth week you know connect this to your own field you you know about this you've heard read about it it's something you're not unfamiliar with um how does this relate to your own major and then finally in the fifth week we had students look back at their previous writings that they have been building up in their portfolios over the course of the past four weeks and just review what they have done and then students at a higher level, though, of course, are doing a more, are doing higher level, are asked to do higher level activities. So at this level, we might start with summarize. What do you know about this topic? Not specifically this reading, because they've only, this reading or this listening, because they've only just started it. But what do you know about this topic? And then connect it to your field. And then identify a problem or a counter argument, something that you don't necessarily agree with or you think is maybe questionable. Evaluate the text. And then finally, again, go back and review your own work over the past four weeks. So I wanted to, so of course, technology played a very important role in uh, several aspects in this, in this progression. Um, and the first was really the, the reading, the materials shortlist. So the, the reading materials and the listening materials that students were able to select from. And that was really important because that is basically what the rest of the tutorial is focused on, is centered around. Um, and what we did with this is basically, and yeah. So basically what we would do at this stage is uh, the program coordinator, who was me, would pick out materials that were level, level appropriate for the student and also related to their domain in some way. And we like to give students a list of three or four different things um, so we would use things like uh, the GLOSS materials, which is an online resource developed by the Defense Language Institute. Um, there was, you know, in the earliest stages, this is really great because there's a wide variety of levels and a lot of materials on each on different topics in each level. And so it was easier to find materials that were appropriate for lower level for learners at the lower level of the spectrum. Um, and they also had both reading and listening materials. So that was also very convenient. And then as students' language abilities progressed, we would move out to things more like um, in-depth reporting on a topic or editorials on a specific topic that's related to their field. Um, at even higher levels, we would use things like MOOCs from Chinese universities. Um, and that was, you know, at this stage, you know, we wouldn't necessarily say specifically these three lectures, listen to one of these three lectures, but we'd say, you know, here are some classes that this university has MOOCs on related to your field, so pick one of these and then go into the MOOC itself and pick one lecture that sounds interesting to you. Um, and then finally, you know, for students who got to the very, very highest levels, we would actually give them research articles to read. Um, and again, you know, at this level, you know, we really wanted students to um, increase their ability to select their own materials. Um, and so at this level, you know, we would really say, you know, here are some reputable journals in your field in Chinese. So, you know, have a look at them 
and pick one article that looks interesting to you. Um, and the goal of this was really, yeah, you know, like I said, we wanted to foster increasing, you know, as students' levels increased, they had increasing choice in the materials that they were able to select from. So then moving on to the second piece of technology that was very key to this project. Um, this is the Google, both a Google form that was linked to the student's own portfolio. Um, and Stephen Chudy is going to discuss that in more detail. Hi, I'm Stephen Chudy from the Center for Language and Technology at the University of Hawaii. Suzanne has showed you how technology supports the student's selection of appropriate material relating to their specialty, their major. The students work with the selected text will continue through a five week cycle. During the cycle, the student engages with the text in interpretive mode and with the text and tutor in uh, interpersonal mode. During each of the five weeks in the cycle, the student will also produce on a weekly basis texts or recordings in presentational mode. And these student products will leave traces in their portfolio. The technological intervention that helps automate the portfolio creation process, however, is much more than a mechanism for simply saving student work. Let's look at how the student's increased depth of understanding of the source text is strengthened during each week of their five week interaction with the text through the student's interaction with technology tools as they cycle through their presentational mode work each week. As we see in the two green boxes at the lower right, the first element in the student's work in presentational mode is planning the production of their text or recording by using a Google form. The second element is the uploading of the produced text or audio into the Google Drive portfolio folder so that the produced text is ready not only to stand as part of the developmental record, but perhaps even more importantly, to serve as a resource in subsequent tutoring sessions. The form that supports the student's planning process for writing or recording is meant to be very simple and quick. It fits into the allotted tutoring session time along with the time needed to actually produce the planned text or recording. As we see here, the form focuses on the genre of the planned text the purpose of the planned text and the audience at which that planned text will be directed, as well as at the style or voice. You will note that the skill of tailoring presentational mode language along the lines of genre, purpose, and audience is of fundamental importance to these learners who are reaching toward superior level proficiency. As the student fills out this planning form, a record is generated that will actually include the link to the student's produced text or recording. The final element of planning that is captured in the form before the student begins their compositional work is linguistic. Words, phrases, and sentences structures that the student plans to include. One can imagine the student completing this stage of planning, proceeding to a different window to complete the actual text, and moving back and forth to copy and paste from this survey question to the text itself. And next on the form, we see the upload button. Students work on texts or recordings directly in their portfolio folder in their own Google Drive, and they share permissions for the folder with their tutor. So the tutor is easily able to access anything in the portfolio by viewing the student's responses to this planning form which are also shared with both tutor and student via an email that is generated each time there is a submission to this planning form. Finally, we see a brief reflective question that prompts student attention to their own success in incorporating feedback from the tutor as they move forward each week. The stage that we've just seen, planning and producing in the presentational mode, occurs at the end of a typical tutoring session. So next, let's examine how these submitted writings and recordings are fed back and incorporated into a subsequent tutoring session. So we just came from the extreme right hand of the graphic representing the end of a previous tutoring session. Now we find ourselves at the beginning of a subsequent tutoring session where student and tutor 
will review and reflect on previous work in the presentational mode. Let's look at how technology supports this recursive use of materials stored in the student's portfolio. As we see in the green square at the lower left, in this stage, the student uses a portfolio linked Google form to support their reflection on the presentational mode work that they did in a previous tutoring session. The form asks them about what they would change themselves and also importantly, what suggestions the tutor has made to improve the text. Let's have a look. So let's focus a little more closely on this form that supports the student's revision. This form is the first thing that a student would typically see in a tutoring session. First of all, the form suggests specific things for the student to focus on and prioritize. You'll notice that these suggestions correspond closely to the higher proficiency level reflected in this student population, focusing on clarity, style, and appropriately complex grammatical structures. The form asks the learner first to focus on their own resources, considering what they would change to improve the previous week's rating. Next, the form asks the student to report what their tutor suggested to improve last week's work. Please note that each week, the student may not completely rewrite a full composition but rather focus in on a few key sentences. This is due to the time constraints of the tutoring session itself, but also helps focus the student's cognitive resources so that they have a manageable amount of development to focus on each week. The goal is to get the learner to do a lot of writing or recording and to practice self-editing, not to produce flawless writing, but to develop. I think that one big takeaway from this form is its emphasis on the students marshalling of their own resources, building habits of mind that will serve the learner long after teachers and tutors are no longer by their side. Now I'd like to hand it back to Suzanne for a view of the portfolio's role in the learner's development over larger cycles of time. Suzanne? Thanks, Stephen. Um, right, so the goal of the portfolio was really to develop, you know, this was not something that students developed and then handed in at the end of the semester. It was really to build a dynamic platform that they could go back to and revisit on a regular basis. So each week they would go back and self-edit both their writing and their speaking from that week. And then each month, after each five week cycle, they would go back and pick one of their readings and one of their listenings or one of their speakings and expand on that. To, they would basically redo it and expand on what they had done previously based on their, their current knowledge. And then finally, every semester, they would go back and reflect on over the course of the whole semester, you've probably done two or three different five week cycles at this point. Go back and look at what you've done and identify ways that you've progressed over the course of the semester. So the platform, so this was really designed to be a platform for ongoing development and ongoing reflection of both their topic, their domain, and also looking back at how they improved over the course of time. And really that was kind of, that was something that was really important to us. You know, we wanted to document the learner's progress, not just for our own program, but so that the learner themselves could see how they were progressing and how they were making improvements over time. Um, and fight, you know, we also wanted this to be a dynamic repository, something that they could go back and change and update as their own abilities evolved. And, you know, the technology that we used for this, the Google form really structured not just the portfolio development, but also the tutoring session. So it made it more streamlined, you know, the tutors, the students both knew exactly what to do when they go into the tutoring room. Um, it reduces the prep time for the student and ensures that there is this very reflective approach taken to um, language instruction. So just to recap, you know, technology facilitated this progression from advanced to superior level skills in two key ways. First, the, the materials that we used were primarily found online. And second, through this uh, Google form and that helps students to build their own portfolio. 